Well, g'day curd nerds. Today we're going to learn how to make queso fresco with cranberries. Now, queso fresco is a fresh cheese. I've made it before two times. We've got two other videos on queso fresco. So don't forget to uh, check those out for the recipe. This time I thought I'd do a little bit, little bit of a Christmas treat and uh, add some sweetened cranberries into the cheese and see what it'd turn out like. I've never added anything sweet before. So this was a bit of an experiment for me. I wanted to use a fresh cheese um, and queso fresco is obviously cheese that is fresh in Spanish translated back so I thought I'd give it a go anyway watch here how I make queso fresco with sweetened cranberries and there are the sweetened dried cranberries uh, that I'm using in this recipe and onto the ingredients so four litres or four quarts of whole milk or full cream milk if you're here in Australia. One sixteenth, sixteenth of a teaspoon of mesophilic culture, one eighth of a teaspoon of calcium chloride diluted in 30 millilitres of cool non-chlorinated water. An eighth of a teaspoon of liquid rennet, I'm using IMCU 200, diluted in 30 mils of cool non-chlorinated water. One tablespoon of salt and some sweetened cranberries. Now you may want to add some sugar to this recipe, some fine caster sugar. Now I didn't, um, but I'll talk about that in the taste test at the end. So I'm just whisking the milk there because it had a little bit of uh, solid cream from one of the milk bottles I used. It's uh, not at the target temperature, I just had the milk warming up on the side to room temperature. Anyway, we're going to bring the, we're going to turn the heat on in a second and we're going to bring it up to the target temperature of 32 degrees celsius or 90 fahrenheit now i'm using a pot on a pot method here i've got a small four liter pot that i've got about an inch worth of water that's about uh, five centimeters uh, that's the water level and that creates the steam to heat this pot up here now I've just turned the heat off and I found that the temperature was going up a bit too much so I've taken it off the heat here uh, because the next stop the next step is quite important so I'm using a uh, mad Millie mesophilic culture uh, and it does say on the label that for soft cheeses or fresh cheeses you can use the whole sachet so I'm just going to pour that straight in there Sprinkle that over the top. Make sure it's all out. Now I'm not going to worry about uh, allowing it to rehydrate because the cheese is a fresh cheese. Just gave it a stir for about 30 seconds there. And I'm just going to check the temperature, make sure the milk hasn't gone up too much there. Now it has crept up a little bit, but because it's a fresh cheese, not so much of an issue. So there's no ripening time for this, so I'm adding the calcium chloride now. Just pour that in while stirring the milk. And allow that to distribute all the way through. And then we're going to add the rennet. So just make sure that the water is non-chlorinated because it uh, inhibits the coagulation of, uh, of the rennet. Also give it a good stir for no more than a minute. About 30 seconds is okay usually. Now I'm stirring from the bottom to the top, not round and round. That way all of the milk gets rennet throughout it. So I'm just going to cover that up now and I'm going to allow the milk to set for 60 minutes at the, th at the target temperature. So that's 32 degrees Celsius or 90 Fahrenheit. So we're just going to check for a clean break. And 
and that looks pretty good now if it hasn't set at this stage for you then wait another 10 minutes sometimes I've waited up to at least um, 20 minutes so we're going to cut the curd now into half centimeter or one quarter of an inch cubes now unfortunately my uh, horizontal curd cutter is one centimeter so I couldn't do the half but I did very fine um, cuts here with the curd knife as you can see there so I'm doing it one way and then I'm going to do it perpendicular to um, the way I've just cut so the curd is fairly small we just want to release a fair bit away it's not a it's not a real moist cheese it's uh, um, it tends to be on the drier side uh, queso fresco so we're going to allow the curds to stand for five minutes and that will allow a fair bit of whey to actually come out you can see there's a yeah, big pool of whey on the top there now we're going to gently lift and move the curds around a little bit just to check that they're all cut so I'm cutting with the edge of the spoon there if I see any large ones now as long as they're evenly sized then you don't have to worry too much So they look fairly evenly sized so now I'm going to start to stir a little bit more vigorously from bottom to top and cutting where I need to so I'm just going to check the temperature or the initial start temperature so it's, um, what is it there, it's 31, so it has dropped down a little bit, 31.3 Celsius, has dropped down a little bit, but that's okay because this phase, while we're stirring, uh, we're going to heat the milk up a little bit. So we're going to stir the curds for 20 minutes and slowly heat it to 35 Celsius, which is 95 Fahrenheit. Now that'll help the curds release a little bit more whey. Not too much, it's only a, a, not a very long stirring period of time, but 20 minutes. Listen to some music while you're doing it, it's very calming. And as you can see there, the curds have shrunk quite a bit, and they said this is after the 20 minutes of stirring. So a very nice curd side, fair bit of whey there. The whey is fairly creamy, so you could use it for a smoothie or for making a little bit of ricotta. You won't get much out of four litres of milk. Anyway, we're going to uh, allow the curds to settle a little bit uh, for five minutes so they sink to the bottom. So five minutes later, we're going to uh, drain through a cheesecloth lined colander, but make sure you that you save the way now I used my pot my heating pot there just tipped all the hot water out and put that underneath my colander so I'm just going to tip that through keep the way and we're not actually going to pour it all into the uh, cheesecloth line colander just with my hands so it's still fairly moist just trying to drain it there now I've got enough way there for what I want to use it for so I've just put that back on the stove top so just using your fingers as a very rudimentary sieve, I'm just uh, draining the way that, uh, the curds and whey there. And as you can see, I tip the pot back a little bit. You get some more whey out. Tip the pot back a little bit because you're trying to consolidate the curd mass for this next step. I'm draining off a little bit of uh, whey there just with my cupped hand. I could have used a ladle but I didn't have one sanitised and my hands were the cleanest thing around. Okay, so that's fairly good as far as draining goes. So it's now time to add in the salt and we're using our teaspoon of salt. Now you could use, if you wanted to make this a sweet cheese, what you could do is use half the amount of salt um, and then half the amount of 
uh, of caster sugar and add a bit of sweetness to the cheese. Remembering this is a fresh cheese that you can eat nearly straight away. Anyway, I've chosen to put salt through because I wasn't too sure how sweet the cranberries were. So just mill that through very basically through with your hands. So I'm just milling that there. Don't mill it too much because the whey will start to go creamy. So I'm mixing in quarter of a cup of the sweetened cranberries. I could have put more, probably up to about half a cup. So there's quarter of a cup there. I just didn't chop them or anything, just left them whole. And then I just uh, basically milled them through. Just make sure they were fairly well mixed. There we go, not too bad at all. Okay, so I'm moving that over to the stove area where I'm going to put it on top of the pot of whey. Now, this is still at 35 degrees Celsius. Um, so I'm going to use that the whey that I kept to heat up the milk. Um, sorry, not to heat it up, to keep it constant temperature. So I'm going to do that for 30 minutes. So this is a very basic form of uh, cheddaring, I suppose, because this releases more whey from the curd. So I've taken it back to the sink area. And I'm actually going to put it into the, you can see a fair bit of uh, whey there that we're draining off there. So I'm just going to put all of the curds into my uh, cheesecloth lined mould. And I'm trying to evenly distribute the cranberries through the cheese so we don't have like a big lump of them. Um, if I had have had more cranberries, I probably should have put more in um, I wouldn't have to have been so sparingly with the distribution throughout the cheese there okay lovely so that's all uh, all in there now what I'm doing here is just poking the cranberries into the cheese um, I thought uh, I would get more in the cheese I suppose I didn't want the surface of the cheese to have big red cranberry splodges on it but it doesn't really matter you don't really have to do this um, this bit here I'm just making sure it's flat as well want the, uh, when I press it I don't want the cheese to go wonky or anything like that anyway so we're going to take it over to the cheese press now we go so we're going to lightly press this at 10 kilograms or 22 pounds for five hours now if you want a moister cheese then you can press it for uh, a lot less so you could probably get away with two hours at this weight and it'll be a fairly moist and the cheese would break apart in your hand um, when you handled it however I wanted a fairly firm cheese that I could still cut um, so I opted for this pressure. Normally, queso fresco, this recipe anyway, I press for six hours. So anyway, five hours later, we have a look at the finished result. So I'm just taking it out of the mould there. Now, I'm not worried about trimming it because it's a fresh cheese. We're going to eat it uh, within the next few days, so I'm not too fussed on on what it looks like. Now the cheesecloth did stain a little bit, however once I washed it in the uh, normal washing machine it was fine. So the cheese can be eaten now or stored at 4 degrees Celsius or 39 Fahrenheit for up to 7 days. Um, so there it is in all its glory, you can see some of the cranberries there and they've given a, a bit of a red tinge to the cheese which is perfectly okay, no problems at all. So um, let's do a taste test and see what Gavin's got to say about this cheese. Well, here we are about three days later. Um, so the queso fresco with cranberries has been sitting in the fridge. So let's crack it open and have a look. Luckily, it fits in this nice little, um, I think it's called Sistema 
which is a, a great little container anyway plonk it onto the board pop that out the way now it smells really sweet but I know it's got a fair bit of salt in it so well, let's just cut a slice out oh, look at that so a nice big chunk of cranberry in there and now these were uh, candy cranberries or sugared camber uh, cranberries so they should have a fair bit of flavor in them a little bit on the knife there mm. so let's have a look at a bit of that mm. oh it's a well balanced fresh cheese it's um slightly salty but the sweetness of the cranberries um, balances it out. It's really good. Mmm, that's delicious. And all the cranberries, all the dry cranberries have plumped up, which is absolutely fantastic. Mmm. This is... Um, this is a lot moister than I normally make um, queso fresco. I pressed it an hour uh, less, so instead of uh, instead of six hours pressing, I, I pressed it at five hours, and and really not as much pressure as I would normally use either. But absolutely delicious. As a fresh cheese, I could have eaten this um, uh, fairly straight away, but uh, I chose to to uh, put it in the fridge overnight. And, uh, and chill it, so it does taste very nice chilled. So this will be one of the few cheeses that I would not bring back up to room temperature. Um, you could, but it's, it's just as tasty cold. Very nice indeed. So if you want to check out Queso Fresco and how to make it, click over here and you'll see the video for that. Don't forget that you can support the channel via Patreon. Um, uh, many people do and uh, help the channel to grow also you can buy the kits and all that sort of stuff at littleringworkshops.com.au thanks for watching curd nerds and i'll see you next time